Hi, my name is Rishab and I'm a second year student here at Washington University in St. Louis. And I would like to talk to you a little bit about my education, my background and my experience. I graduated from VIT Vellore as a chemical engineer. VIT Vellore is the second best private university in India, according to uh, AC Nielsen India Today survey done in 2012. Upon graduation, I had a couple of job offers, one from a multinational company in Chennai and another from a small pharma company. I actually chose the small pharma company because I thought that the exposure that I could get, the learnings that I can have and the impact that I could have on an organization would be greater at the small pharma company. Hence, I accepted an entrepreneurial position at an emerging business of manufacturing active pharmaceutical ingredients for human and veterinary formulation. Over the course of those four and a half years, I learned how to manage people, tackle difficult situations, and most importantly, how to focus on finding solutions to complex problems. I started off in a technical role and my primary or key responsibility was the optimization of various manufacturing processes. Within a couple of years, I took up an initiative of launching a new product in the market. A new product for us was not a novel therapeutic anti-asthma drug or anti-cancer drug, but in, in fact, it was a generic molecule. Since it was a small company, the senior leadership gave me permission to go ahead with this project. After about six to eight months of extensive research in the lab, we came up with a cost-effective process to manufacture the product. In, as a matter of fact, the successful launch of this product was what got me promoted in about two years. The same launch is what got me introduced to marketing and what got me excited about the commercial aspects of a business. Hence, I decided to undergo formal education in the commercial aspects of a business so as to groom me or groom myself into becoming a better leader. Therefore, I applied to B schools and got enrolled at Olin. So let's start with what I've learned over these past two years at Olin. Let's start with strategy and how my past experiences links with strategy. So Century Pharmaceuticals or the pharma company that I was working for was trying to fulfill the broad needs of a broad market, a strategy which has not yet been proven. After consultation with senior executives, my team and I decided to focus on the profitable needs of a narrow segment, which in our case was antibiotics, and tried to explore synergies therein. We made several trade-offs. We accepted comparative profit margins for an exponential increase in volumes. We outsourced manufacturing wherever there were tangible benefits and we started recruiting, developing and retaining smart and talented people. From an even percentage of commodity and niche users, we revamped our portfolio to con contain primarily products that were good in quality which were priced reasonably, which was again a good fit with the volume-based trade-off that we had made earlier. I was particularly instrumental in eliminating one key false trade-off, which had been hampering our success for a very long period of time. We started reinvesting in our own company rather than in mutual funds and index funds of emerging countries or emerging economies thereby signaling that the investment done in a company which was perceived at that time as a cost is not inversely proportional 
to the profits but may be actually proportional or at least is correlated to the profits of the company. Let's go on to marketing. Marketing. Let me start off with marketing strategy and then we can move on to other aspects. In a classic case of the implementation of the BCG growth model, my team and I started looking out for investors for a capital intensive and relatively less profitable business segment. After explaining our value proposition, we were able to get GVFL or Gujarat Venture Finance Limited on board. And hence, we were able to redirect our financial resources from our cash cow, which was the active pharmaceutical ingredient business, to the appropriate question marks and not the dogs, according to the model. When I launched our products in the emerging markets of Africa. My team and I use the traditional concepts of segmentation, targeting and positioning leading to greater than expected revenues and profits. We effectively moved away from mass production and adopted mass customization and one-to-one -one marketing wherein we worked with the clients to better understand their needs as compared to our competitors so as to create a switching cost for our clients whenever an alternate supplier comes in who is cheaper by 0 0.0001 cents per ton. We also moved from the selling concept and adopted the marketing concept wherein we based our business model more and more on the needs of the customers and refrained from pushing our already existing products onto the market. And finally, in a direct application of the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule, we appropriately directed our resources to those clients who had a greater impact on our bottom line. So finance, let's talk about finance. One of the classes that I took recently was options and futures. And let me start with a forward. What's a forward? A forward is actually a contract between two counterparties to sell an underlying asset at a predetermined price, at a predetermined future date. So the seller has the underlying asset and he sells it to the buyer on the maturity date. So there is no actual transaction of money at the signing date. Now, there are a couple of key issues with a forward. There is a liquidity risk and there is a credit risk. So there is another type of a financial instrument called a future which takes care which takes care of both these types of risk. A future is a standardized contract that is exchange traded and hence there is little or no liquidity risk. Whereas the payment to the seller is guaranteed by a clearing house and a future also uses or a clearing house also uses a daily mark to market scheme wherein the credit risk is also almost negligible. Now let us look at the payoff for a buyer and a seller. So the buyer on the maturity date pays the price of the forward or the future which can be denoted by F and he receives an underlying asset whose value at the maturity date is given by S of T. Hence, his payoff is just S of T minus F. If you consider a seller, his payoff is just the opposite of the buyer. He receives an amount F, whereas he lets go or let goes of an asset whose value is S of T. So his payoff is F minus s of t let us just write that down so 
So as I was saying, the payoff for the buyer is just S of T minus F and the payoff for the seller is just F minus S of T. But F is again the forward or the future price and ST is just the spot price of an asset at maturity. Now let us go one step further. If we have the terminal value and the initial value of an asset, considering consider continuous compounding, the relationship can be given by Vt equals V0 e to the power Rt, which is just the terminal value is equal to the initial value multiplied by exponential of the interest rate multiplied by the time. Here is one simple example. S can be can be viewed as the V0 or the initial value. R is the interest rate and T is the time period. So the future price can just be looked as f is equal to s e to the power rt or in this case is equal to 30 e to the power 0 0.05 into 1 which is equal to 31.54 now let us look at an example about how you can take advantage of arbitrage if someone were to offer you the same future for a price of $32 per future. In this case what you would like to do is first sell the future that they are offering you. So you would like to short it. So if you sell the future Your obligation at time t is equal to 0 is nothing but at time t is equal to maturity you receive an amount which is equivalent to the price of the future but you also have to deliver the underlying asset. Now if you have to deliver the asset you need to buy the asset but since arbitrage is about zero net investment, positive returns and no risk we don't want to use our own money we want to borrow so you borrow the price of the asset at time t is equal to zero so you borrow so you borrow thirty dollars but your obligation is to give back that amount at the at the maturity date and that can be given by the continuous compounding interest which can be calculated as now after having borrowed this amount what you need to do or what you can do is buy the asset So you give out money and then you have the asset at time t is equal to maturity. So what you can see hopefully from this is at time t is equal to zero everything cancels out and at time t is equal to maturity the asset part cancel out but you're left with a net profit of you're left with a net profit of 0.5 four four dollars per future or 44 cents per future considering that this is a small amount you can trade in a lot of futures to get a sizable amount now this particular strategy is known as the cash and carry strategy this is simply because you're carrying the asset forward till the time of maturity now assume that someone offers you a future contract for $31 a future. 
what would you do in this case? In this case, you would buy the future in whenever you want to take advantage of arbitrage, you buy low and you sell high. So if you buy the future, your obligation at time t is equal to zero is nothing. But your obligation at maturity is that you need to pay the $31 in order to get the asset. But you do get the asset. Now, we're not interested in the asset. We're interested in the profits. So what do you do in anticipation of the asset? You sell the asset at time t is equal to zero. So you receive the spot price of the asset at time t is equal to zero. And your obligation is that you, do, you have to deliver the asset. Now what you can do is take those $30 and lend it out. And the amount that you will gain at time t is equal to maturity is just using the same continuous compounding 30 e to the power rt or 31.54. Again, if you look at the big picture at time t is equal to zero, everything cancels out at time t is equal to maturity. What you're left with is just 31.54 minus the $31, which gives you a profit of $0.54 per future. We can also talk about an option, option pricing, Black-Scholes model, and option pricing using Black-Scholes model. But I would like to defer that to a later time. I also took a class called Fixed Income, but I'm hoping that through this video, I do get some fixed income. So, strategy, marketing, finance, the two that are left are operations and entrepreneurship. So what do I know about operations? Well, I know that Little's Law holds. Little's Law is like the Ohm's Law for engineers. It always holds. And what do I know about entrepreneurship? Let me show you. I know the spelling of entrepreneurship and that in itself is quite an achievement. Moving on to the soft skills, I would like to highlight three key strengths of mine through various examples. The first being dedication. And I would like to give you an example of a time when I showed dedication at Century Pharmaceuticals. After about a year, the top management was discussing about a five metric ton per month contract with a multinational company. The challenge was going to be our capacity. We had a capacity of 3.5 metric tons per month. On getting an intimation from the marketing department, I called a meeting of the factory staff and motivated them to accept the challenge. Initially, we increased the pad size slowly. Then we cut down on the process time. Together, we were able to increase our capacity from 3.5 metric tons per month to 4 metric tons per month. But we were still not able to reach the 5 metric tons per month target. Next, I suggested that we outsource a part of this process to a nearby facility. This suggestion actually worked well and we were able to reach our target of 5 metric tons per month. So what was the result? The result was that the top management got the order and the production team got the reward. The second skill that I want to highlight is innovation. After working two years at the plant, I had a feeling that the company had been working on the same products for a very long period of time. The company had tried, but had failed to introduce a product that was innovative, lucrative, yet sustainable. I started doing preliminary market research by talking to clients, customers, 
suppliers and experts about where the Indian generic pharmaceutical industry was heading. I found out that it was moving from the previous generation of antibiotics to the newer generation, i.e. from erythromycin based derivatives to azithromycin. Although it was outside the scope of my work, I started doing research on this new molecule and after about six months of extensive research, we came up with a cost effective process to manufacture it. The next step was going to be the mass production of this molecule at the plant or the factory level. Our first such attempt to do so led to disastrous results with lower than expected yield and quality. The company in the past had had given up on such initiatives when faced with problems, but I did not want to give up and I went back to the lab to re-optimize the process. And on the fourth or the fifth trial, we were able to successfully manufacture the product. So what was the result? The result was that today, azithromycin is one of the best selling molecules of Century Pharmaceuticals. Third, dealing with people. In everyday life, I think this is one of the most important skills to have as a manager. There was a particular time when we had a supply chain issue at Century Pharmaceuticals. We were sourcing or we were purchasing oxytetracycline hydrochloride, which was one of our key raw materials from a company named Shifang for the past 10 years. We were happy with the quality and price. Now, Shifang was a government owned company, which now changed hands to a private company. Under the new leadership, they increased the price of the product by 20%, saying that it was no longer viable to supply at the contracted price. I asked permission from my senior leadership to tackle this issue. I immediately found out new suppliers who could replace our existing supplier and ask them for samples to analyze their quality. Then I created a mathematical model based on quality, price, capacity, and attitude of top management. And then my senior leadership put weights on each of these verticals on the basis of then basis of the industry and basis of the product in general. And finally, we made a recommendation for He by Sanctuary. He by Sanctuary could not initially support us with the required quality. They were higher on all other parameters. I cajoled the management of He by Sanctuary to improve their quality for a quantity requirement of one container per month. This quantity appeared to be attractive to them and they agreed to support me. The quality of their shipments were multifold and more than met the requirements. So what was the result? The result was at a time when we had a supplier crisis, we found out a new supplier who was much more cost effective and in the process, we were still able to deliver our goods to our customers within the stipulated period of time. Let me talk a little bit about my internship and the three big key things that I learned from my internship. The first thing that I learned from the internship was that you need to be able to communicate effectively in a very short period of time or succinctly. My boss was the senior director of market research and comparative intelligence, and she was a very busy woman. And hence, she could not spare much time with me. Therefore, I learned that even if you have the most brilliant idea in the world, if you cannot communicate it within a very short period of time, chances are that the idea will not be acted upon. The second thing that I learned was how to take my own initiative and try to find solutions to unknown and complex problems. Like I mentioned, my boss, my mentor was really busy. Hence, I networked 
with 15 different people before I found the person who had the relevant knowledge and the experience and was willing to help me out with my project. Fortunately, at my previous job, I had mentors who were willing to guide me at least during the initial phases of a job as to which processes and which systems or which customs were to be followed. But in this internship, I learned how to network with different people, unknown people and find my own way. The third thing is the third thing that I learned was a little bit personal. The company that I work for actually conducts a poster symposium at the end of the internship whereby the top three people or the top three students are awarded prizes. And I would be lying if I said that I didn't want to be in the top three. As a matter of fact, I would be at the office at 6 a.m. in the morning and continue working till 6 p.m. for the last two weeks of the internship. This shows the level of dedication and commitment that I had or I have to achieving success. Unfortunately, I could not make it to the top top three. I got the fourth position. And I felt really bad and a little upset for the next few days. After the internship, I went back home and maybe it was the home cooked food or the family, the friends or just the atmosphere at, at any house. But I felt that a failure should not just be taken as a failure. It should, it should be taken as one of the stepping stones to success. And I talked to my father and he told me that one of the key things that you should learn from a failure is that the next time you're faced with such a challenge, you need to work harder. And I have implemented that advice over the past seven, eight months leading to pretty excellent academic results over the past semester. So as I'm walking towards my car for a skiing vacation, I just, I forgot a few things and I would just like to mention it. Statistically speaking, I've really done well in the simulation games. In marketing strategy, we had to play a simulation game called Mark Strat and our team finished second. We finished first in a class called Investment Theory, which had a similar simulation game. And to top it off, in strategic management, we had four team members. Uh, we had an operations guy, we had a finance guy, we had a marketing guy, and I was the CEO. And I led my team to be number one in that simulation game as well. Uh, thank you. So that was a little bit about myself. A quick 30 seconds about my interest. I was part of the rowing team last semester. I have won intramural, intramural for badminton and I think I'm a pretty good skier. If you have a few more minutes, you should check out my skiing video. Thank you and I look forward to talking to you further. And a big thank you to all those who have watched this video and I hope you found it pretty good. Thank you again and hope to see you in person.